Welcome to On The Scene. I'm your host, Regina Price. And as you can see, I'm here with a mosquito control truck, which means we'll be talking with Charles Abadam on this year's mosquito population and what we may or may not expect. Also, some preventive ways to stop those pesky insects from biting you. Stay tuned. Welcome back. I'm now here with Charles Abadam, who is the Mosquito Control Superintendent for the City of Suffolk. Thank you for joining me. You're welcome. All right, now we're going to talk about, obviously, mosquitoes. And let's just jump right in. Um, what is the um, estimate for the population growth of mosquitoes for this year? You know, you really can't predict the mosquitoes, especially with, with a year like this. The weather, weather is really unpredictable. We've had a lot of water. Um, we had, you know, we had some water, you know, some precipitation in the winter as well. There's a, been a lot of people that are trying to predict what's going on. It's just something you can't predict this year. I mean, year to year, you can't really predict mosquito populations in itself anyways. Um, you can only take what the weather's giving you and give an overly broad estimation of what you think could happen with what's going on with the population. Um, a lot of people in the early part of the spring you know, there's a lot of a lot of people try to predict it. It's mm -hmm. just something you can't do. You know, um, you know you're gonna have a humid and hot summer. You know that the spring is gonna bring wa uh, water, um, and as long as the sun comes out, which <laughs> yeah. it is right now, um, you know you're gonna have the conditions that are prime for mosquito populations to pop up. But when the rain starts knocking populations down, then you really don't see what's going on in our traps and our surveillance. So um, it's just something that you can estimate, you know, make predictions, but it's just something you cannot tell. Okay, that's understandable. And we'll get into more about how mosquito control um, takes what they have, sure. you know, after you get a little bit of rain um, and, and how you're able to do more preventive measures and what sure. you do. Um, before we get into that, just a couple more questions. Um, last year we saw a rise in uh, what's called Eastern Equine Encephalitis, or Triple E. Mm -hmm. um, is that still a concern for Suffolk citizens? Absolutely. Um, triple E and West Nile virus are the prime arboviral diseases in Suffolk. So we're always looking out for them every year. We're always doing arboviral surveillance. We're doing mosquito surveillance. So it's something that we look for and are doing it for the public health. You know, in order to understand what's going on out in the city um, and seeing where the, where the disease is being transmitted, we're doing tests and whatnot so that we can figure out where populations of the disease are okay. based on mosquito populations as well. So Eastern equine encephalitis and West Nile virus are just definitely the most important for this area and we're always looking for it. Now, last year was very interesting because we had a high triple E season mm -hmm. um, and a lower West Nile virus season, but that, like I said, is all dependent on whether the environment is allowing that to happen. Um, you know, allowing the virus to cycle through, to hit reservoirs, to um, proliferate in mosquito populations and in their reservoir hosts. So, um, you know, we're always looking for it, but we can't tell whether Triple E is gonna be high this year or whether West Nile virus is gonna be high this mm -hmm. year unless we just continue to do surveillance. Um, and, and like I said, there's just too many, too <laughs> many variables to predict something like that. Okay, and I understand that um, both West Nile virus and Eastern equine encephalitis are kind of, they're rare for humans to get, but uh, could you describe well, some triple of the symptoms? E, yeah, triple E is a little bit more rare. More rare, okay. Um, yeah, and there's actually two illnesses associated with triple E. You have a systemic illness and then you have an encephalitis. So the systemic illness is the, actually the, the less severe. Um, you get mild flu-like symptoms and it's over usually very quickly. Okay. Um, and, and a lot of the times these diseases that stem from mosquitoes really don't show a lot of symptoms. So a lot of them can be asymptomatic. So, uh, which means just having no symptoms at all. Mm -hmm. um, now, when encephalitis, go, encephalitis goes to the more severe case, or the more severe illness, it becomes an encephalitis that, which is an inflammation in the brain. So that is more severe, but like I said, triple E is a much more rare disease. Um, 
the hosts or the vectors for um, triple E are mainly bird biters. Um, it's okay. when what we call secondary vectors, not the primary vectors, um, when the secondary vectors come up and we're seeing the disease in those vectors or those mosquitoes that um, we have much more of a concern because those mosquitoes are the ones that will probably bite humans. Okay. Charles, can you talk a little bit about the West Nile virus and uh, give some more details as far as stats um, sure. and just, you know, concerns that people may have about the disease? Okay. Uh, West Nile virus is actually more prevalent uh, in the summer and the more fall, you know, going into the fall. So we're going to see more instances of West Nile virus that way. Um, there are some figures, and I, I want to make sure that the citizens know that they don't have to be alarmed, but to, prevent, to protect themselves, which we're going to do later in the segment. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's always a concern this time of the year, uh, but 70 to 80 percent are infected that are infected of people um, show no symptoms. So they're asymptomatic. So um, those 70, of 70 to 80 percent of those people, of those people, they get the disease, but it's basically just flu-like symptoms, mm -hmm. and they get over it. Your system um, is able to get over that disease, depending on how healthy you are. Um, you know, a lot of these diseases, like Triple E and West Nile virus, affect the older and the younger uh, a lot more severely because their immune systems are a little bit more weaker. Mm -hmm. So if you're a healthy adult, then you're going to be able to get over this illness very quickly. Um, now that, of course, is the very, the more, the less severe illness. So, um, out of that 70 to 80 percent of people, one of those five, one of five will develop what's called the febrile illness, and less than one percent will develop a neurologic illness or an encephalitis, mm -hmm. and 10 percent of those people will actually be will decease. So um, it's a very small percentage. If you take all those numbers, you crunch them down, it's a very small per percentage of people that are actually going to die from West Nile virus. That doesn't mean that you don't, you know, you don't prevent it from happening. You don't um, protect yourself from the mosquito bites, you know. So um, that's why what we're doing is trying to help the public and doing a lot of mosquito control as far as surveillance and applying pesticides and, uh, and larvicides and whatnot out in the city. But like I said, triple E is, is definitely a, a less severe infection that m less people get. So it's definitely much more rare um, because the disease and the vector is mo mostly a bird buyer. All right. Um, that's very important. And if you all have any more questions um, as, as you're watching this segment, uh, what is a good contact number that they can call to get more information? Um, good contact number for us is 514-7609. That's the main office number. You can actually uh, send an email to mosquito.control at suffolkva.us. And um, you can um, send your questions to there. There are a lot of other websites you can look at. Mm -hmm. You can search for our webpage, uh, Mosquito Control and Suffolk webpage, or you can just go to the CDC to look up uh, more information on West Nile virus or Triple E. Um, they have a lot of information that citizens can look up and, and learn about it themselves. Okay, Charles. Well, thank you. We'll be right back uh, with more on some preventive measures. Uh, it's summertime and. We know the mosquitoes will be out, so we're going to talk a little bit about how you can prevent some of those mosquito bites. We'll be right back. Welcome back to On the Scene. In the first half, we talked a, a lot about the different um, diseases that mm -hmm. uh, come from mosquito bites and um, measures that you take with surveillance, and we'll get more into that. Okay. Um, but let's talk about some preventive ways. What uh, should citizens do, really, to reduce the number of mosquito bites this time of year? Okay. Well, there's a lot of personal protective measures that you can do. Um, I know it is the summer, or it's becoming the summer. It's getting more warm, but long, loose, and light clothing. Um, anything that's covering your skin, mosquitoes have a harder time getting to your skin and actually biting you. Um, wearing actually light, lighter clothing, uh, mosquitoes are attracted to darker clothings like blues. Um, 
um, not particularly blues, but anything darker, mm -hmm. um, because they'll, they're able to sense that, they're able to see it. Um, staying out of the environment during the peak times that they're out, which is a hard thing to do, because right, right. everybody wants to enjoy the summer. So, um, you know, uh, trying to stay out of that, but if you can't, using DEET properly, um, taking a look at, ma making sure adults look at the canister, look at the label, uh, abide by the label and apply it correctly, um, you know, especially to kids. Um, there are other things that are kind of like more natural ways. Um, I've been kind of advocating this idea that if people are going to be outside in their yards and um, they know they're going to be outside at, at, a, at a particular time, you can set out an oscillating fan and mm -hmm. blow the mosquitoes away. Uh, mosquitoes aren't very uh, strong flyers, they're just very persistent. Okay. So if you <laughs> try to swat a mosquito away, uh, it's gonna come right back at you unless you have something else that's forcing it away. Okay. Um, that, that really helps. Um, a lot of people like to use the citronella candles um, and, and sometimes they use the citronella, citronella candle behind the fan. So that could broadcast the scent out so the mosquitoes are more attracted to that. Uh, there are a number of measures that you can use, but here's the thing is that people, sometimes people, uh, sometimes things work better for certain people. So I don't really want to promote a certain thing. I just want to say that use all the tools that are out there for you. You know, um, using certain sprays, mm -hmm. certain lotions. If that works for you, continue to use that. Um, it's just something that people think that, you know, media and put out there and say, you know, my product is the best. Okay. Not, I mean, you can't really say your product's the best unless, you know, there's scientific data. Mm -hmm. Now, um, around your home, what people can do is make sure that they clean out their bird baths, that anything that's holding water, like artificial containers, um, uh, planters, old tires, um, kids toys, they have little holes in them water seeps into them when it's uh, raining outside. So it's prime time for all these areas right now to be holding water. Dumping them once a week, cleaning out bird baths once, once a week, mm -hmm. that's really gonna help you when the summer hits and you have those um, tiger mosquitoes out. Um, and those mosquitoes primarily breed from those types of areas. Um, you, can also, uh, you can also call us. We'll come out and do inspections in the public right of way. We'll check your ditches and we'll see, you know, if, if there's mosquitoes breeding, then we'll apply larvicides. Um, you can call in and, and tell us what's going on in your neighborhood um, during the evenings. Um, you can use our website. Uh, it's just, if you search for Suffolk Mosquito Control, you can get to our website and actually put a mosquito control request in. Okay. Um, there are other things that Mosquito Control actually gives our citizens, and we give them these mosquito dunks. Yes. <laughs> these mosquito dunks are available at fire stations 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. <laughs> um, also at the Public Works Administration Building, um, the 6th Street Rec Center, mm -hmm. and uh, the Municipal Building. Um, you can also come to us. Uh, we would prefer that you go to your local fire station. It's probably closest to you first. Mm -hmm. um, and you can get um, this pack uh, each month. Okay. Um, so you can come back each month. Um, some of the things you can do with this is you place them in water. They only work when they're activated by water. So they have to be in water, not thrown out in a yard, okay. <laughs> not hung on a string in a tree. These work primarily for the young juvenile mosquitoes called larvae. Um, they have to feed on this and then they'll, they'll actually die. So um, you can break this up and spread them throughout the ditch that you have or put them in a bird bath or, or put them in any type of stagnant water that you have. Um, so um, that's available to you for free. You just have to prove identification that you, ha you live in Norfolk and give something, uh, give some identification. In Suffolk. In Suffolk. Yes. All right, well, it's very obvious that you all are doing everything you can mm -hmm. to provide um, access to mosquito control. If you have an issue, you can call Charles, you can call the department and they will come 
you know, do a free assessment, uh, mosquito dunks. There's just a wealth of resources uh, in terms of taking care of those mosquitoes and also right. preventive ways with the clothing mm -hmm. and the, the DEET. That's and what's deet. most important with mm -hmm. the insect repellent. Sure. Okay, that's wonderful. That's, that's uh, excellent. Mm -hmm. um, if we could go a little bit more into what you were talking about earlier, the surveillance sure, sure. aspect. So um, a, a lot of what mosquito control does is it, uh, it's, it hinges upon what's called our surveillance program. We have mosquito surveillance and we have arboviral surveillance. Uh, mosquito surveillance is just that. We actually survey the city, setting out traps so that we can catch mosquitoes on a nightly basis and they can be identified to species. Mm -hmm. Particular species are harborers of disease. So those particular species are vectors for disease and those are the guys that we're prioritizing our time for. Um, what we want to do is make sure that those big populations of vectors are being controlled. We will take that data, analyze it, um, set out our operations, whether that's doing more larvicide in a particular area or actually sending out a truck in the evening. Most of the times when we send out a truck, adult deciding happens two, two nights consecutively so that we kill the mosquito population that's, that's there and then the one that's coming up behind it. Okay. Um, because mosquitoes are constantly breeding, they're constantly populating. So, right. you know, we're trying to give the best amount of service that we can with the resources that we have. Okay. Um, can, you, so, can you talk a little bit about, I'm sorry, um, the, the equipment you use? I know we're standing here uh, with right. the, the truck behind us. Well, the mosquito truck is just your basic mosquito control spray truck. Um, you have an adult side machine in the back. Uh, pesticide is projected out of the machine and um, it's driving on our public right of way at about a 15 mile an hour pace so that we get the biggest broadcast of uh, the spray that we can. Um, a lot of people um, say, oh, there's nothing coming out from the truck, but there actually is. It's very, what's called ultra low volume pesticides that is actually being projected out of the truck. So if you don't see a visible cloud, it is still broadcasting. Okay, all right. Um, there are other things that we use. We can, we can talk about some of the traps that we have. Um, a lot of them are baited with carbon dioxide, which mimics um, the carbon dioxide that we breathe out. Okay. That's why mosquitoes are attracted to us because right. they sense the CO2. So what we do is we have carbon dioxide baiting um, traps and those traps attract mosquitoes. And we have several iterations of traps. Um, there are other traps that are trying to target mosquitoes that are actually going to lay eggs. Um, and those traps are called gravid traps. Um, gravid meaning gravid females, females that have eggs in them ready to lay. Okay. Well, there's definitely an exact science to, Absolutely. to what you do. Um, can you explain a little bit about how you teach that science uh, or ed educate the public on mosquito control? That's something that we're working on constantly. Educating the public is something that is necessary for people to understand what we do and to understand that, you know, it's not just an e it's not an easy thing that we do. They, we have to take in consideration a lot of variables that the environment throws at us. Mm -hmm. You know, rain, tornadoes, you know, um, areas that are holding water, ditches, things that we create, things right. that are holding water. So um, taking into consideration the, you know, all of that information, we have to, we have to um, analyze that data and make daily operations. Education is something that we're constantly doing. We actually try to put ourselves in areas where there's a lot of uh, citizens that are going to come through. Just like Peanut Fest, we are always in the uh, we are always in the city tent. Mm -hmm. We have a table so that we can educate the public on what we do, um, showing them pictures, showing them mosquitoes, giving them tips, mm -hmm. uh, educating them, just telling them basic things we've already discussed. You know, preventative measures, doing things in their yard. Um, we try to put ourselves, like I said, at the Peanut Fest. Um, we've done some county fairs, and we try to. We and we we also do recycling days. Um, recycling days, especially because a, a lot of the times people bring in tires, and a lot of times people don't know that tires are a main producer of mosquitoes right. throughout the city. Um, so, when people are bringing tires in, I usually have. Uh, one of our techs, Anne, is out there just giving out information and pamphlets and telling them what they can do, where they can get information and where they can get mosquito dunks. 
All right, Charles. Well, thank you so much for being on this segment and giving us a wealth of information of how to take care of that mosquito population and have some preventive measures. One last time, very quickly, your phone number here and website for mosquito control. Our phone number is 514-7609. And the website is, uh, if you go on the Suffolk website and you search for mosquito control, I'm pretty sure you can get it. There's a button on the front page where you can um, click on. Uh, it's a little tab, uh, or it looks like kind of like an app. Mm -hmm. and you can click on that you can get to the Suffolk Mosquito Control website. All right. Well, thank you again, Charles, for your time. You're welcome. Thanks for watching this edition of On the Scene. We'll see you next time.